all right what's going on herd welcome back to the channel thanks for tuning into another video my mouth ain't moving because i'm in a damn party here we got just a skyline and he has donated one of his vehicles here we're going to be trying it out the pariah i've had a lot of a uh, lot of uh, just say some consistent requests on this beast i wasn't about to spend what is it two million dollars or something ridiculous so i did find a friend that has this thing and uh we're gonna we're gonna be testing it out we're gonna see if this thing drifts we're gonna finally give you guys the content that you've been demanding So we are at the Ebisu School course here on Xbox One. It, it is raining. Hopefully it'll stop raining here pretty soon. And um, no, we're not modding. No, we're not trying to use the rain as the slipping and sliding. It's just simply, it just happened. So from what I understand, this thing does stance up normally. Let's figure that out right now. Now to the haters out there that are saying, oh, well, you're only going to be able to drift this because of the rain. Well, I will stick in this long enough for the rain to dissipate, okay? We will get some dry skids out there. This is the first time I've ever dripped the Pariah. Uh, like I said, I've had a lot of a lot of requests, but you know me, I don't want to blow all that money if I don't have to, and I knew that this thing was borderline on drifting. So we are stanced up. It did stance up normally. That is a pretty good thing for it. Obviously, in the efficiency, that's going to help it out. Let's head on down to the track. All right, so I cannot even see the track right now. That's how yep. wet it is. Uh, I'm having I'm having a bit of a bit of an issue here, but it is drifting. But here's the deal: it's it's in the rain. I know that this is much slipperier than what it normally would be, so I'm gonna give it a second. Hopefully the rain will dissipate. If it doesn't dissipate, we're gonna have to reload this thing up and turn the damn rain off, current weather off. I do notice that it wants to straighten out on me. It has like, um, it has some auto correction. It has a little bit of stability control. It wants to just, it wants to stay straight. Other thing that shocked me is I thought this was a supercar. It's not a supercar, it is a sports car. So that's kind of interesting. That's probably why people wanted to see it. And I didn't really realize that. All right, so this rain does not really look like it's gonna dissipate. I'll give it a couple extra minutes here. We're just sliding around, having a good time. I, I will say this thing drifts pretty decently on the, on the rain, on the slippery and slidey, but I can already tell that it's wanting to straighten out a lot more than your traditional, say, Rapid GT or Schwarzer, or, you know, and a lot of those vehicles. Now, there are numerous other vehicles that drift, as we stated. I think people are kind of saying because in, in that video i said there's four really competitive drift cars right and by that i mean if you're going to get into drifting and you're an average drifter and you're going to come into an event and ex you know expect to go side to side tandeming there's only like four or five vehicles that you're going to have a decent time in without having to get a headache trying to learn how to drift a vehicle specifically but as skyline made very clear to me there's probably 30 vehicles in this game well, at least 20 that certainly can drift right now that's talking about the clutch kick, that's talking about the speed boost glitch, the, the, the high speed drifting movement. The single gear drifting, you can probably add in another 15 vehicles. I notice this thing will single gear drift like a, like a beast right now, but we're on the rain, all right? We're on the rain, and um, it's not looking like it's going to dissipate. So like I said, I'll give it a couple more minutes. If it doesn't dissipate, we're going to have to roll this thing up on a turn off the current weather and just get some clear weather going. Yeah, I'd say this thing definitely likes to make drifts. It's just that the wide turns and all. I think it's manageable. Like, all right, guys, the rain has dissipated and we are now drifting away. The track has dried up, and we're gonna be trying to get some clutch kick. Whoa, a little spin out there. Uh, so it's very aggressive on the clutch kick. Definitely, definitely gives you some speed. Um, I did notice the single gear drift was quite superb in this thing. I'll show you guys just a little bit here in the middle. But the, here is the deal: is we're not really single gear drifting. We're uh, we're trying to be competitive. We're trying to do some doing some clutch kicking. As you see, we can really hold the drift in the single gear if you want to. But who really wants to nowadays? That's the issue. I think it's possible to hold drifts, but you do suffer with angle and stuff reliability right right yeah and we're gonna kind of that'll be reflected in the score a little bit there's definitely as skyline saying there's definitely a straightening out factor as i'm kind of referring to it as a little bit of stability control for example if you're in aceto corza which you guys should well maybe you've already seen my aceto corza review um, stability control in there is is a night and day different out and that's pretty much the closest thing i can compare this to is some stability control 
Now, if you're saying, well, that was a good drift there, Black Sheep, that's a single gear with a, with a clutch kick entry. So, like I said, the single gear is really great in this car. It's got a lot of power, but the clutch kick, it works. Like, obviously, you're seeing this thing does drift. It will get a grade, no questions asked. But what kind of grade will it get? That's what we're going to have to find out. Oh, a little spin out there. So I want to throw it a little bit more aggressive to try to get away from that correction, and that's where you're getting that spin out from. You definitely have to fight the car like a Yeah, you got to fight lot. every movement. Right, exactly. Right, and that's a point for you guys out like there. The if you want to get used to, if you want to get used to cars, you just drift them for a while. You know, you can get used to them. There are a few more cars than I even really thought drifted. Uh, you just got to get the right build. For example, the Massacro or Massacro, however you want to pronounce that one out there. That one, apparently it does drift here, according to Skyline. And when I got in that thing, like, this was probably six or eight months ago, not good for me. You know, it was not good for me. But it's probably because I had, you know, maybe the wrong suspension and then the wrong tire compound and stuff like that. And all of that does, it does affect your, your drift. As soon as you're stancing your vehicle up and trying to slide, just because it doesn't show you that it affects it in the menu, like in the Los Santos Customs or Benny's, it doesn't show you getting more traction, doesn't mean that it's not affecting your traction. I know a lot of people like to argue that fact, but it's, it's just the truth. Why would I lie to you? All right, guys, so we're going to get a little bit more drift in action. I'm actually going to go reverse down here. Let's go reverse on the track and try it out since most of it's a left-hand turn. Let's try a little right-hand turn in action here and uh, get a little taste of that. But I, I definitely can get a pretty accurate feel on what this car is about feel uh it's definitely got that correction that's probably the biggest complaint i have but it has a lot of power that clutch kick is it's vicious i will say that but you got to fight the car every like tooth and nail you got to fight this thing every movement you do and every little drift you're gonna have to fight it 10 times through that one little drift and then transferring it it wants to transfer real quick too so you're gonna have to just like that. All right, homies and homies, ladies and gentlemen of the herd. I think I'm probably ready to uh, give this thing a grade here. So we go through cost, we go through driftability, and we go through efficiency. If you are not uh, have not too acquainted with the Desert Drift series, we give it a grade. 30 points available. Let's start with cost. What is the cost of this thing, Skyline? It's like 1.4 mil. 1.4 mil, you're going to put in your upgrades on that beast then, and you're probably going to be in the area of about 1, 1. 1.7, 1. 1.6 and a half, somewhere around there. Uh, yeah. What is there for upgrades? Is it extensive or is it minimal? doesn't look like there's a ton that you did to this thing. Oh, it's so. pretty extensive. Oh, it is extensive. Skirts, the spoiler, you got bumper options. Okay, so you got some options, options out there. There's too. All right, all right. So you do got some options in there you can check out. Obviously, if you do pick this vehicle up, uh, this isn't my vehicle, so I'm not in the in the Los Santos Customs showing you, but if there's an extensive amount, that means you can probably get this thing up to the 1.8, 1.9, maybe even the 2 million mark, depending on how expensive these things are. I wouldn't say probably 2 million, but you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It's an expensive one, especially considering the rest in this series. So cost on this thing, for the drift aspect, if you're getting this thing, expecting the drift, well, you can expect the drift, but we made it pretty clear on the expectations as well. You know, this is a much more advanced car. This is not your entry car where you're going to come into drifting and oh, I'm going to get the pariah and I'm going to be competitive. It's not really like that. However, on the other hand, it's not a vehicle that you're going to spend $2 million on and not get any drift out of it. So it is going to get a score. Now, how do I score this one? It's a little bit tough. I don't really have much to compare it to, but since it is in the sports class, that changes a lot. If this was in the supercar class, it would actually get a higher grade, in my opinion, because we don't have much for super, uh, supercars there. This is in the sports car class, where all of the competitive vehicles are, though. So I'm going to have to give this thing uh, probably a 6.5 to a 7 on cost. Say probably a 6.5 on the cost. If this thing was in the 800,000 range, it would be sco uh, scoring much more higher. It'd be much more efficient for the cost range. Now, it does drift, so I got to recognize that. But let's go into that then for driftability. Driftability on this thing, it has that auto correction, that straightening out factor. The, um, as I stated, the, what was I calling it? Stability control, kind of, in a way. It just wants to stabilize itself out. And when that's the case, it makes it a little tough to learn in. Now, with that, every, every vehicle is a little bit unique, right? Every, every vehicle, you're going to have to learn the ways of the car. you got to learn the way, right? And that is the factor here. So if you're ready to learn the way and you already know 
generally what to expect with this car after watching this video, then the driftability is okay. But again, we need to keep in mind the rest of the series here. The other vehicles that have gotten nines, tens, even eights, they aren't quite on this level of, you know, wanting to straighten out. They don't have the straighten out factor. For example, Schwartz or Rapid GT, uh, Comet Retro. These vehicles that are at the top of the line when it comes to A, people know about them, and B, they drift quite well and consistently. It's not quite on that level, but I'd say it's probably on the level right below that. It has a very, very aggressive clutch kick. It certainly will hold a nice drift, as you've seen right there, but then I had to recorrect it. And we only have about, well, I got precisely 25 minutes in on, on practicing with this thing. So after 25 minutes, my drifts are looking slightly better, but still, they are not going to be a competitive level. I wouldn't be able to bring this thing in against someone that's good and practiced with a rapid and expect to to beat them you know obviously i could beat them if it came down to it and i had a really good line not just me i mean anybody but the issue is is they're going to be a lot more consistent than i'm going to be able to be in this car so driftability on this thing again i'm going to have to give it about a six and a half to a seven the reason why i'm going to give it a, i'll give it a seven on it the reason why i will give it a seven is simply because of that clutch kick it is very aggressive it will allow you to do it but the reason I can't give it a seven and a half or higher is simply because of that auto correction, that stability control. If you get used to it, you get used to it. But the fact of the matter is it's always gonna be there even if you're used to it. So we can't ignore that. Now that's gonna bring us into efficiency. The nice thing about this thing is it is very efficient. You can go in the open lobby, you can easily stance this thing up and expect it not to be blowing up. That is pretty fundamental, especially in the open lobby drift events if you guys ever attend those you don't really want to be bringing vehicles that you're going to blow up because if you blow them up in an open lobby what do you got to do you got to call insurance you got to pay insurance you got to call your mechanic you got to get it back and now you got to wait and and if you blow it up again now you got to wait well that was my point and if you blow it up a second time you got to wait with your mechanic before he'll even want to bring it to you and it kind of turns into a, a rough situation if you don't have a vehicle that does stance up normally this one does however so it is going to score relatively high on the efficiency once you get it stanced up it's going to react consistent no matter what this is the original car that I have. I've crashed in the Skyline a couple of times. I've rolled it in the rocks. I've beat it up. It's not, you know, it's not rumbling around. It's not stumbling around. It's bumpy like we see in the Rapid GT. You get a little fender bender and you're, you're bumped out and now you gotta go and restance your vehicle. And that's kind of a pain, isn't it? Now this vehicle, I got quite an extensive amount of damage and I'm actually gonna purposely throw it into the wall here. That bouncing. Back it up into this tree here. Get a little bit of a little bit of damage action. If I were to pull out on the track right now with the rapid, I'd be bumping. The, the car would just be bouncing all over the place. All right. It's you know, one thing about this car is that you have to you have to keep it real strict field since it's not. You want to just make it drift as best as possible. So definitely no spoiler, no custom tires, supporter, you know, muscle SUV rims, stuff like that. That really help your car out. You don't want to be putting it on like a big wing on this car. That really doesn't help the situation, right? All right, so hopefully you guys heard that loud and clear there. You're going to have to have a really specific build. Yeah, you guys notice that I do slam a lot of my cars down, and that's one thing that I have found out here more recently in the last few months, that not every vehicle should be slammed down. Actually, if you slam some of them down, they make it more sticky and or actually want to make the car spin out a little bit more, like actually spin out for the worst. Long story short, that is that. So, I mean, efficiency on this thing, I got to give it a pretty high grade. As long as you are already understanding the cost and the driftability i'd say the efficiency is it has all the abilities as i said if you're keeping in the account of the cost and the driftability which we already graded we have to take that out when we're talking about efficiency i don't really see any reason now the reason why i went and smashed it up is to really see the other portion of the consistency here the efficiency and it doesn't bounce around it really it may have made it slightly more where it wants to oops it may be made it a little bit more to where it wants to straighten out, but it really isn't that much, and hell, it might not have even done anything to it, now the more I think about it. But it certainly seemed like it wanted to straighten out a little bit more after I came down. I backed it into the tree and flew it up the mountain. So I will give it a nine and a half. Let's give it a nine and a half. So it's a six and a half, a seven, and a nine and a half. Six and a half, seven, and nine and a half, 13 and a half, plus nine and a half is gonna be 20, 23. 13 and a half. 23 it is. So 23 out of 30. That is bringing it uh, mid-range on the Desert Drift series, obviously. We do have a few cars that have scored 30 out of 30. We have a couple that have gotten 27, 28, and 29. So 
it's a pretty average car in the does it drift series but all in all as i stated i think we've we've kind of agreed on that this is all in all a pretty average drift car when it comes down to it when considering all of that so with that said guys i appreciate y'all tuning in like and comment and subscribe and sharing the videos if you're sharing the videos sharing these videos even though we are in new games and trying new things is going to be pretty fundamental to making these new games succeed obviously we are not disbanding gta i do have plans on trying to get back to the pro line drift series as well and we're actually going to be uh, going in and, and recording a new series, the beginning of a new series here with Skyline. So he will be the episode one at the Hoon Stars hideout. So keep your eyes open for that as we move forward. As always, guys, I hope you all stay happy out there. Please stay positive, and we will definitely speak to you next time.